Your child's ophthalmologist has recommended a type of surgery called tear duct probing with stent placement. This procedure is used to open up a blocked tear duct near the eye. Doing this should allow tears to drain from the eye again. Let's take a look at what happens when a tear duct is blocked. Tears protect the eyes and keep them moist and healthy. Tears come from the conjunctiva, which is the clear tissue over the white of the eye and from the lacrimal glands. These glands are located above each eye. The tears flow across the surface of your eye and drain through tiny holes called puncta. Puncta are in the corners of your upper and lower eyelids near the nose. The tears then travel through tiny passages in the eyelids. They eventually go into the nasolacrimal duct before emptying into your nose. This is why your nose runs when you cry. When the tear drainage system is either partly or completely blocked, tears cannot drain normally. The eye becomes watery and irritated. It can also be constantly infected. A child can be born with a blocked tear duct, or it can be caused by an infection or other problem in the tear drainage system. Probing and placing a stent in the blocked tear duct opens the pathway for tears to flow normally through the tear drainage system. This will prevent the constant watering and discharge from your child's eye. Tear duct probing and placement of the stent is usually done as an outpatient procedure at a surgery center. Your child will have general anesthesia, so he or she is in a deep sleep for several minutes. To open a child's blocked tear duct, an eye surgeon may probe the tear duct and place a stent to keep it open. The surgeon will dilate or widen the puncta with an instrument. Then he or she will gently pass a very thin probe, followed by a plastic tube called a stent, through the puncta and into the tear drainage system. Then it goes into the back of the nose. The stent is then stitched to the inside of the nose to keep it in place. You may be able to see a tiny piece of the clear tube in the corner of the eye. This opens the pathway for tears to drain. This tube stent will remain in place anywhere from two to nine months, or as determined by the surgeon. When it is time to remove the stent, the ophthalmologist usually does it in his or her office. As with any surgery, there are possible risks with tear duct probing and stenting. Tear duct probing and stenting risks can include sore eyes, red eyes, eye infection, tear duct not opening, bleeding, and problems from anesthesia. An alternative to tear duct stenting may include simply probing without the stent to open the duct. Another option may be surgery that creates a new pathway for tears to drain. Your child's ophthalmologist can explain why he or she chose probing with stenting to treat the blocked tear duct. Your child does not have to have the blocked tear duct treated. However, if it is left untreated, there is a risk of your child having more eye infections and ongoing watery eyes. If you have any questions or concerns about tear duct probing with stenting, ask your child's ophthalmologist. He or she will be happy to help you understand the risks and benefits of this procedure. Also, if you have any questions or concerns about your child's eyes or vision in general, don't hesitate to bring them up. Your ophthalmologist is committed to protecting your child's sight.